This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. And this is a show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling or other interesting facets that you've probably noticed on the stream lately. Uh, but today we got another great interview here in studio. But first, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and IndieWrestling.us. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And the video versions of that are, of course, on the Wrestling Mayhem Show facebook and youtube page and of course keep an eye out for events because these interviews are happening all over the place and those events are over on the facebook pages for sorgatron media wrestling mayhem show indie wrestling.us you can join us in the facebook live ask questions of our guests and uh join us there uh just like willa in the chat room what's up uh from what is he a much love from auntie for our guest today already oh, uh some, some love already coming at you our guest today <laughs> is pb smooth what's going on what's going on and we'll ask him what the pb stands for in a few moments here <laughs> uh but i'm willing i'm willing to take your guesses in the chat room <laughs> uh we'll get into that so so first of all we like to get a, a little get to know you question on here on the interview uh what is your first kind of memory of uh of pro wrestling that kind of really kind of got got your attention uh i was a big fan of attitude era and there's one episode i was watching where it's just uh Stole Cold playing tricks on DX, getting them back with like bear traps and a whole bunch of other stuff. And bear traps, I remember yeah, that. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Like that was my first memory. And uh, when I got older, I started playing basketball, so I kind of like didn't watch it as much. And then as towards the end of my basketball career, I started getting back into it. Mm -hmm. uh, John McChesney actually was a good friend of mine, introduced me to indie wrestling, and things just took off from there. That's also. I feel like because I had that too, where like high school would just like. Yeah, I kind of fell out of wrestling for a minute, right? Yeah. Like, I, like, I, is it was it a I'm too cool for that kind of situation? Maybe for a year or nah, for me, it was more. Uh, I felt basketball was the route I needed to go. Um, a lot of people pushed me to do it because of my height and size. And, and, that, and how tall are you? For they can't since they can't notice with you sitting or on audio. <laughs> hey man, I'm a seven footer when I'm Oof. in that ring. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. like the camera adds 10 pounds. Maybe the ring adds two inches, right? <laughs> it might. You never know, man. He's legit. He's legit. He's a tall <laughs> guy. I'm 6'4", and he's towering me. So, <laughs> uh, But anyway, so you got into basketball and then kind of went back into it. Yeah, I played uh, Division One at Hofstra University. Nice. Then I ended up playing at Mercy Harris Division Two in uh, Erie, PA. Mm -hmm. uh, I went back to finish my master's because my mom wanted me to and for other reasons. And uh, I felt that... I was still playing basketball for bragging rights as opposed to this is what I really want to do with my life, you know, because mm -hmm. I was used to people saying, oh, he's just tall. He got this because of his look and not because he put in the effort for it. And once like wrestling came to me, it just felt like everything I was supposed to be doing, you know, like when you walk out that curtain, everything that you put into it shows, whether it's your look, your charisma, what you do in the ring, like it comes from just me. I don't have to worry about a coach putting me in a game or nothing like that. So it felt great and 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 yeah. also kind of moving from a, a team sport to uh and while wrestling is definitely a bit of a team situation but still it's it's you yeah putting you out there yeah absolutely a little more without a net yeah so awesome so, so let's talk a little bit about kind of getting into it and, and the indie wrestling side like at what point did you say uh uh, you know, kind of rediscovering indie wrestling. Was that like, oh no, this is the thing I got to do at that point? Or were you always like, I think I could do this? Well, until uh, I met McChesney, I didn't know about indie wrestling, so mm -hmm. still fairly new to me. It was just WWE or bust, right? Yeah, exactly. I had no idea. So uh, I went to a few shows with some of my friends and they were just looking at me weird. I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, you can do this. Like, because they know me personally, my personality. Mm -hmm. They see my look and see how, like, I stand out, like, around everybody else that was in the ring and stuff like that. And originally, I was inquiring about being a ref because <laughs> I didn't really know too much about it and stuff. And they were just like, no, you're too big. You got to try out. So once I started taking those bumps and running the ropes, it just it felt like I needed to be there, you know? 
That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So, so and, and, and so it's kind of a natural fit. You already had the athleticism with basketball, right? Yeah. So was it a, a huge adjustment, at least the you know the bump side of it or anything? Yeah. Um, on a technical side, it was an adjustment, mm-hmm. but mentally, I think I was prepared for it just from all the training I had playing college sports and uh, knowing how to use social media, things like that. Like I felt like I was prepared to be in the spotlight. Just wasn't sure which one. And I feel like wrestling was that spotlight I need. That's for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell me a little bit about you know uh, you, you trained. You first got out there. Your first couple matches were all were you always PB smooth or did you settle into that or? <laughs> well, PB smooth was actually a nickname I always had growing up, just because of how I carried myself, like the way I dress, always have a fresh haircut, things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, by the way, show off that show off that <laughs> that side out there. I. Oh, there the you park? go. Yeah, that side right there. There yeah. you go. This guy. I'm I, working I, on something. <laughs> I'm always interested in uh, DJ Z always posts his haircuts on Facebook. He just got yeah. a, a sweet cut like two days ago. And Him it's and like, Gringo Loco, man. They they got it down. I don't know if I got the head for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got to get out your comfort zone sometimes. I don't know. I'm used to having a low cut, but I just don't care anymore. I'm just growing it. Whatever. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and perfect for the wrestling, too. But anyway, so, so getting into it, talk, talk a little bit about kind of developing that character in the ring. Um. Well, when I first started... I was under the impression that with my size and stature, you got to be really careful with what you do in the ring because you don't want to give away that presence right away and stuff. Like a lot of guys can jump into it and learn as they go, but I was too afraid of like making mistakes. Mm-hmm. So I'm at a point now where John Thorne sat me down and was like, hey, we need you to... And if you don't know who John Thorne is, that's my promoter at AIW. Uh, he sat me down. A few other wrestlers were just telling me I need to get out of my comfort zone, not be afraid to try new things and stuff like that. So... I'm more just being me now as opposed to what I was perceived to be like stereotypically and things like that. And mm-hmm. I think it's working out better for me. And, and I know I've seen, you know, uh, large athletic guys come into a promotion and it's like, well, he's there because he's a giant. You yeah. know, he's a giant. And he can beat people up kind of, and, it, and it looks impressive, you know. But, you know, was there a little bit of a stigma on your size to kind of prove yourself a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, when I was first training, um, there's not a lot of seven footers in the area yeah. in wrestling. Let's put that out there too. Yeah, I mean, I was perceived to be more like a big show, and mm-hmm. my body size isn't like of a big show. It, you know? it seems like if you're over six four, you do a choke slam, for instance. Yeah, you know, you know? like that was a move that I uh, I felt I should do just because no, of my size. No stuff. disrespect to our friends on the show that can do that do choke slams for their finishing move. By the way, yeah, but. I mean, <laughs> my my original finish is somewhat of a choke slam but i kind of made it my own you know like it's more of just finding what you could do well and then like tweaking it so it could be original and unique to you Mm -hmm. so that's kind of where i'm going with my moveset and things like that awesome yeah um so so tell me a little bit about so i know i've mostly seen you with iwc uh teaming with colby red uh and and i think you is jinx your manager in one of the promotions too is it am i seeing that on the posters right she was our manager and uh PWR, but I kind of ended that. Yeah. I kind of like claw slammed her. <laughs> wanted some thumbtacks. Oh, She'd be all right, though, you know. She's all right. That's a Saturday night for her. It's best uh, for business. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! Uh, so, so you're getting. Uh, tell me about that tag team experience with with Colby a bit too. Like, uh, you know, how how do you take the the tag team versus the uh, singles? Uh, well, for me and him, we both started training at the same time at a training school in PWR. Uh, we did that for about a year, and the problem with that was everything was good, but they only have a ring up at certain times, like when we have shows and things like that. Mm-hmm. And me coming from a basketball background, and him coming from like other sports, we're used to being able to train or practice every day. So uh, I sought out more training, and that's how I got hooked up with the AIW school in Cleveland. I was lucky enough to train with Johnny Gargano for about six to seven months before nice. he went. Uh, and I started bringing him down there, too. And it's just a good feeling knowing that, like, somebody you came up with is, like, with you, like, on the grind trying to get places. Um, And also, like, the singles, because it definitely helps me uh, come into my own and puts more pressure on me to perform well. And it exposes my weaknesses that I could turn into strengths at some point. So I think it's the best of both worlds, having the singles and a tag. Uh, tell me a little bit more uh, uh, character-wise. I don't think we, we disclose what PB actually does stand for. Oh, <laughs> the PB stands for pretty boy. Uh, I'm a good-looking dude. You know, I'm confident. And I like to portray that and show that when I'm out there, you know. 
Are you aware of Shane Taylor's Pretty Boy Killer moniker? <laughs> I am, but as you can see, I'm still alive. There you go. So there you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, so so uh, you know, you, you've uh, done done uh, some work here with IWC Cleveland Erie. Have you have you branched out anywhere outside of that? Uh, yeah, I've been traveling a lot. I've been uh, IWA Mid South recently. Nice. Um, I just did a pre-show match with Black Label Pro, which is also in Indiana. Hmm. Um, I'm also working at Alpha One in Canada. So I'm making my rounds. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, uh, coming back to IWC here, uh, which you will have known that by the time this thing gets out here on the feeds. Uh, so, and Justin says hi in the chat room. Oh. And he says he's going to be seeing you tonight as of this recording. So, <laughs> looking forward. He's, he's asking where you're going to be popping up. And I don't know if that's that's out there yet. You know? right. you just, just, you're just, just know I'm going to make an impact. You're that's around. Matters. And there's been a lot of people just rolling in and making impacts lately. So, Well, here's the thing. Uh, I met Plummer before I even started wrestling. Like really? at a Yeah, at a Night of Superstars show. And he always was talking to me about because this was when I was on the fence of whether I was going to do it or not. Mm-hmm. He was just like, just keep working on your size and things like that. So I always wanted to be at IWC, but just with like dates and things going on, I had to like figure it. We had to figure it out. So it's nice that we finally figured some stuff out. So nice. I'm sure you'll be seeing more of me. Yeah, because you kind of just popped up here and there, some pre-show matches, some of the the, yeah. the uh, uh, town shows, I think, right? Like, Yeah, and I mean, like IWC is a hard place to get into. Like, mm-hmm. They bring in some great guys. They have a great production and all that kind of stuff. So and tons of people involved. Yeah, yeah. so you just got to earn your way in there. And that's what I plan on doing, you know? Awesome, awesome. Uh, so tell me, what are you watching these days? Like, is there anything that, you know, people you're seeing out on the indies, anything you're seeing on TV or online anywhere that either you're drawing information inspiration from or is just kind of like hey that's a thing to check out you know or a person to check out or anything uh i want i'm watching a lot of old ring of honor stuff because there's mm-hmm. a lot of hidden gems in there in terms of like move set and character work and stuff and i also like watching guys like die jack because he kind of changed the game for big guys you know so i'm incredible being, like close to my size and doing moonsaults which mm-hmm. i probably won't do but <laughs> You know, I, just, I wonder if he's going to be doing a lot of those moon salts in WWE, though. So. I, I mean, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I draw a lot of inspiration from like just '90s hip hop culture. You know, like, mm-hmm. that's what I grew up in. Like from my hairstyle, the way I dress, the music, like all that kind of stuff influences me a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So, what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling so far for you? Um. I'd say the best. In my opinion, is the the fact that we're living our dreams. You know, like people are paying to get our pictures and autographs, and like a lot of people take those kind of things for granted. Uh, it's just fun, just having that experience, like saying, like this is what I want to do, and doing it. You know, like not many people get a chance to do that. Like they end up in jobs they hate and stuff like that. But just being able to see the world and do what I want, it makes me feel great. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for a negative. I just feel like sometimes like there's a lot of petty drama maybe that goes on like this guy doesn't like that person or whatever so sometimes it may not be specifically how good you are that gets you booked places per se but for me I just try to keep the positive vibes around people and just show like I work hard and I'm a good person and just go with that you know I, I've been noticing that a lot um you know talking to people about the locker rooms um you know and the and you know the positively back there. It, it seems like the positive people end up in positive yeah, locker rooms eventually, right? Yeah, absolutely. You just got to focus on what you got to mm-hmm. do. Just be a good person and people will want to be around you. You know, like that's the way I look at it anyway. Yep. And, and want to work with you. So yeah. awesome. Uh, so what's, uh, where can people find you online? What's coming up for you generally? Like what promotions are you popping up in, right. in the near future? Well, my Twitter handle is underscore, Mr. Fresh to Death, the number two, Fresh to Death. <laughs> uh, I these, these, these nicknames, I love. <laughs> yeah, man. You can find me on Instagram at PB underscore smooth. Uh, the Facebook is facebook.com slash seven foot savage. And uh, I'm starting to post more uh, date tour dates almost of where I'm going. But mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. next week I'm at PWR. The week after I'm in Cleveland, Ohio for AIW. And, then, and you make regular stops there, so if anybody yeah. catches this later. Yeah, AIW is great. Uh, December 17th, I'm back at Alpha One Wrestling in Canada. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just uh, just stay tuned. Follow me on those platforms. You'll see me. Are you going to have a a, a, uh, a name off with, I don't know if you're familiar with 
uh, Ali Moriarty and Darren De Niro's kind of interesting moniker announcements when they come out these days. <laughs> Absolutely not, man. I'm just being me. Yeah. Like, like this was here before wrestling. You know what I'm saying? So no so. competition for the Tinder terrorist. Absolutely okay. not. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what comes up with you here with IWC and see if you, uh, you're going to break out there with that. It's a great group and a great group of guys and want to see what, who you're going to mix it up with. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. And you can check out uh, whatever happens as of this recording tonight at IWC's Winner Take All uh, or other matches he's been in with. Uh, let's see. You've been on a uh, premiere? No. I'm not thinking that. Uh, AAW, of course, go check them out. They're over on Smart Mark, but Indie Wrestling, his uh, stuff with IWC is uh, available over there as well. And every now and then I also post on my YouTube account, Two Smooth TV, number two, Smooth there you TV. Go. Uh, I got like a you little. You got the branding down. Jeez. Yeah, man. I told you. Like, I, I'm working on it. I got some video logs on there. I got some old matches. I got new highlight tape coming out. Go subscribe. Yeah, go, go drop, subscribe, like, drop comment. comments. Yeah. <laughs> Share it with your friends. Let's get it. Yeah, there you go. On your phone, on your mobile device, on your Apple tv get it yes sir <laughs> thank you so much for joining us and uh and everybody go check him out and uh all the wrestling interviews we have going on at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and indie mayhem show and uh until the next time support indie wrestling oh. this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.